We are live on the, uh, yes. You, you ready? Um, yeah. I'm not ready. Um, I'm just getting this off and going back to bed. Oh, no. Okay, see you next week. Bye! All right. All right, we've never crafted before like the other show. We are using the wrong overlay, but we're going to have to get over it. Um, maybe we can fix it for the next one. But that's okay. <sighs> We yeah we yell at the we yell at myself I'll yell at myself later. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and start with the uh, start with the introductions in the bottom left hand corner. Playing for Gears de Apocalypse, it is login ek. Playing for the clan that I don't know the name of. It is Santi Bongi. That's it, an amazing name. It is Unidos por el Vicio. Hello again, Black Lily. Hello, Khan. Unidos por el Vicio. There we go. I can pull out the Spanish. Ah, see, that, that's good. Good we have a Spanish expert here. It's qu quite a bit better than my accent, for sure. So, uh, ZBZ to start off. Um, interesting stuff. What's your ZBZ knowledge like? I am silver with literally every other race, because I've not played them for too long. So, uh, this is going to be fun. I'm just going to try to be the comedic guy for this one. That's what I'm talking about. We actually, so, um, Log Login was looking for build orders earlier, and so I gave him a build order for Protoss and Terran. And he's like, but what if I get a Zerg? And we're like, oh, crap. So we gave him a Zerg build order. We'll see how he does with it with very short practice. Um, but it does look like we're seeing um, more or less there are different uh, ways to achieve the build. But uh, so slightly later gas for Santi Bungi uh, and earlier gas for Login EK. But uh, for the most part, we're going to be seeing gas, probably Ling Speed, probably Bane Lings, trying to take a third base. There won't, there will be maybe one or two carriers, but it'll just be on the edge of the map, you know. Yeah, just so you can spectate, we've made sure they turn off their interceptors. Do you think that, like, ZBZ, it could be like the Protoss are, like, ha put two Zergs and have them fight for, like, sport? That sounds more of a Terran thing to do, isn't that what, like, Monks do in the campaign, pretty much? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, except he used them against ter other Terrans. We can barely hear Nico. Hmm. Okay, hold on. Let me just turn this up a bit and tell me if you can hear Nico now. I'm probably gonna have to turn Hello, down game sounds. Do we need adjustments? Do we need adjustments? Okay. Well, just just to check the integrity of the game, we have six lings versus a hatchery. I don't know about this one. This is actually uh, this is this is correct. The problem is the lings are over here for uh, login. He needs to send these to the nine. He only has four lings. He needs to have six, unfortunately, or probably eight to deal with this. But luckily, Santi Boogie is more concerned with trying to kill the hatchery, so he loses one and he has to back away. I don't know about you, Chief, but someone attacking someone who's not attacking generally tends to win. Ah, ah, you would think that, but this is TBC, remember? Um, and what what this extra hatchery is going to give since it stayed up, it's going to give far more larva production, meaning that there will be tons more lings out for login than there will be for Santa Booby, who is just However, going for a wall-off style. He is down two drones. 
Uh, yeah, and those drones, he will... The thing is, because he invested in this early uh, hatchery, that's why his drone count will be lower. But because he has more larvae, he will be able to make more lings and also more drones. And you notice that his supply is quite a bit higher, so... Now you see that their drone count has evened out quite a bit. Well, uh, I now know this for my um, ZDZ games that I will never play because I am a player. Yeah, yeah. Now we are seeing plus one roach speed and and roach uh, ro roaches and probably we'll see roach speed here come out soon for Santi Boogie. So what this will mean is that. Uh, this early bailing nest probably won't be used since we don't see a link flood. He would be very vulnerable to losing his third to an early link flood. But since that's not happening, it will probably end up uh, just be uh, it'll just end up being more or less an equal roach free roach mid game. Um, and because uh, yeah, we're still not seeing a link flood. The good news is because he had his base earlier, he has now a solid three drone advantage, and he'll probably continue to get um, a drone lead. The one problem is he has plenty of queens, but he's not injecting his third, so that's a little bit rough. No, but the bad news is that that Brenda got a kill on the Overlord, and there was a creep tumor that finished just as the, she reached the end of the creep. So then the Overlord didn't get away. Yeah, it was a sad day for all Zerks everywhere. And funnily enough, uh, the queen actually was attacking at the same rate the creep spread, so it was just always on the edge. Uh, not quite slow. Not Queen's quite like far. living on the edge. I mean, isn't that what they do in every other matchup? They just spread creep and in your face and you're like, well, that's not very nice of you. <laughs> I'm trying to think of another comparison you can make, but it's... I don't know. It's just like, I guess, dust. It just accumulates everywhere and you're just like, get out of here! And then you spend half your marines trying to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, the big problem right now that's going to happen is even though this economically has been really great for uh, Login, he hasn't dropped a Roach Warden yet, and he's about to have to try to repel a plus one Roach Ravager or Ling attack with just Lings. And the plus one allows the Roaches to two-shot Lings when before they would before they would um, three-shot Lings. And so unfortunately, he's just going to kind of get run over here. And unless he's able to get out some sort of like amazing defense, uh, this is about to be a very short game. I mean, that's cool, cool luck. It was made in vain, my friend. You're still very quiet. Um, let me see if I can it's somehow... Okay, don't worry. The, the, there will be loud uproars echoing across the earth as these banelings connecting to the boat. Yeah. The banelings... Yeah, unfortunately, this is just a very solid wall, and I don't see anything over here for a lot of them to over the repel attack. Good old strategy of cheesing in the corner. Yep. Unfortunately, this is less of a cheese and more of a fact that there's 2k, you know, almost 3k minerals in the bank for login. Uh, that's the big, the big, the big news story here, right? I mean, cheese is cheese, right? You got the cheesy points. <laughs> Nonetheless, if spending your, uh, your minerals is cheese, then yes. Yes. Unidos por el vicio take the game 1 to 0 against GDA team. All right. Very sad. Let me see if all I can right. somehow make you. I don't know if I can make you louder uh, at I all. You can pull out my dodgy Spanish accent because, despite the fact that I am Latino, like, I'm going to get stabbed. Here we go. Boom. You're like really loud now. Say, say something. Say something. Ah, oh, that should be much better. That should be much better. All right, everyone's just gonna go deaf now, and it's gonna be amazing because you don't need to hear anything else after you've heard my voice. My voice is beautiful. It's my gift to the world. Oh my! Legend is on my butt about using the correct overlays. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this. Um, WCS3 uh, yeah. for replays, 3.0. Yeah, it's for observers, not replays. So observer interface. Oh, it's observer interface. Yes, both. Okay. Uh, 
I, I just looked at the stream now. Clearly, clearly Login K did not look at Sun Tzu's The Art of War. I'm not going to float 3K. Yeah, Sun Tzu said that. All right, let's see. Um, let's remove, let's see, overlay, cam, boom. Uh, we should really add my camera to yours. <laughs> I wonder if you can even do that. I don't think you can. I'm just even removing my camera. No one needs to see me. This is all about the players. Um, yes, uh, I did tell him to make units in the build order. Um, uh, I, I will not accept responsibility for that. When he wins, I take the credit. When he loses, he should have trained harder. What can I say? I, you can't carry these guys. You can't coddle them their entire lives, can you? I think it's. I think it was fine. Um. So I told him to make a lot of drones whenever his whenever his lings were on the opponent's side of the map. And unfortunately, that game we just missed the part where lings were on the opponent's side of the map. Uh, that's okay though. We'll, we'll get there at some point. We'll get there. I'm being bullied by sarcastic Twitch users. I, yeah. Sarcastic Twitch users are mean. Uh, this is this is why I don't this is why I don't stream anymore. Mm. Is it not because your your computer just can't handle it? It's more because I'm lazy and being an entertaining streamer is difficult. I can attest to that. It's not hard if no one watches you though. That's what I normally do. Mmm. True, but then if I stream on my friend's account, then I'm going to have to entertain his friends. And it's going to be like, ah. They're only partially interested in me. Well, you know. You know what they say. It's better to be partially interested than not interested at all. That's why I only come on as cameos for when he streams. Then I was like, oh my god, it's Nico. Oh my god, it's Nico. What does Nico do in here? Hey, there's a Terran in this one. Sansego, did you mm -hmm. coach Sansego? I did not. No. But I'm gonna take credit if he wins anyway. Okay, fair enough. As the the de facto coach for all for all Diamond Below. Yeah, the apocalypse Terrans. No, I only took Coach Sykesa and then he decides to promote three seconds before the actual tournament begins. It's just like, well. Why did you do that? <laughs> I'm giving it a dunce hat and like I'm stealing all of his plushies when this is over. So let's talk about the format here because it looks like Santi Bungi is going to be playing again. So I guess this is a knockout format, huh? So if Sa if Santi wins this game, he'll go on to the next. But if Sansego wins, he'll go on to the next. That is how all kill works. You stay on until you're defeated. Okay, and or, and the, or, or you run out of opponents. And what are we playing to? We are playing to a total of four games. It's a best of seven series. Uh, so it can last anywhere from around an hour to um, about four. Yeah. I've had, some, I've had some long best of sevens. Best of seven, okay. <laughs> to four. Uh, it's okay, login. Like... Yeah, 15 minutes learn ZBZ, don't worry. We're going to get you trained up so the next ZBZ you're just going to crush them. I'm going to put you and Typhoon against each other. We're just going to like run like seven hours of ZBZ. Well, that's going to be like about 100 games. Yeah, at least. <laughs> at least. I'm not even exaggerating that. It genuinely is. Oh. Let's do some basic math here. 760 is 420. On death or ra. Meh, if you're 12 every game, that can be 100 games. Well, see, the, the funny thing is about 12 full, what people don't know is it's a macro build. So sometimes, sometimes even though that you are uh, between 12 pool, the game still lasts quite some time. I disagree. Whenever someone 12 pulls, I laugh and kill them. Not against Terran, it's not a macro build. <laughs> oh, oh my well, gosh. Bottom left, left hand out of the corner. Con how convenient for you. Bottom left Leaving hand that corner. one out of the description. B bottom left hand corner, Nico. Playing for uh, a team. What's the team? Uh, no one, because there's no one there. Well, bottom does... right-hand corner. Okay, okay, okay. But bottom left-hand corner, it is the trees. Ooh, evil trees. Yeah. Bottom right-hand yeah, corner, playing for team. Lauren. Playing for team Unidos por el Vicio. It, it is, is Santi Bolivia. 
Sorry, sorry. Okay, fine. In in the top left hand corner of the map, we have the Red Terran playing for Guardias de la Apocalypse. It is Sansego. If I turn, if I just turn my camera, like the game looks really weird. Like if you just like it looks like like I had no idea how rectangular the command center was. I thought it was a box, but it's actually quite rectangular. I think you are slightly confused, my friend. It is not rectangular. Ah. It is more of a rhombus. Okay, it could be it could be a rhombus. Although it, it, it is a weird shape. To me, it's more like a probably like dodecahedron. Or something. Okay. All right. All right, so what we have coming out of here from the uh, Terran looks like to be a very standard Reaper into uh, base. Uh, and so I think we could still see anything from this. I don't know Sense Nego's predilections. I'm not sure what he's prone to no make. No idea either, but he, he went for a 18 scout, didn't leave the SCD to block the third. Interesting choice. Uh, Much yeah. like pulling the drone away from the third, not actually taking it. Yeah, that's he's just checking for those bunkers, you know. Like, oh, really, the cannon rush is what he's looking for with this drone. I mean, Death Bora is infamous for being the worst cannon rush map on the map pool right now. This is true. Um, I, I will say that uh, I, I kind of enjoy that he took his 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 SCB back. As I what I've noticed is uh, Terran builds tend to be really tight on minerals, and so giving that SCB but... back to mine tends to be really good. What are your thoughts? Um not really no you even if you do an 18 scout and you lose the scv like it can die and you don't really notice that much because you have a meal the only reason you would actually struggle for minerals is if you take a uh, early second gas at 212 or so after the uh factory goes down and you want to go for a 250 cc or a third cc mm -hmm. otherwise you should be okay because you're on two bases meals aren't really an issue Okay. That also depends down to uh, how many Hellions you're making. Well, we'll because, disagree uh, to agree. But not, we'll agree. No, no, we're disagreeing, okay? There's no agreeing here. You're just making me sad. This looks like uh, this, this is currently a 2 one zero. I'm very confuzzled. There is no second. Whoa, what the heck is this? Okay, it's a uh, 10 to... 10 to... Oh, that's crazy. Um... We're seeing a second barracks go down and a uh, reactor, and a reactor, not a reactor, a uh, tech labs um, factory building a siege tank. This is in a barracks going down in front of the Terran position. This is a very defensive posture. Um, uh, he did stay out the Roach Warren, and he is very well aware there is. Ah, uh, this wrong in the way. There's Roach all uh, the, the ideal response would be to uh, not walk your Marines into blings, first of all. Second of all, would actually be to get a starport behind this. And then switch it on to the tech lab. But but uh, I will say can... we don't actually see um we don't see a whole lot of gas, so we're not gonna see a bunch of ravagers, and we do see a third base going down, so this isn't massively committed. There's drones. So actually the siege tank should be able to defend this pretty well as long as he gets it sieged up and he doesn't uh lose anything. This should actually end up being a very economically favorable position for San Sego. Can always just take the tanks, move across, even without medevacs, and siege up by the third that's been taken. Yeah. And it's like, well, what can you do? Well, and Santi Boogie is just going back, yeah. so really all this attack did was, I mean, it forced a, a slight detour of the Terran build, but as long as he gets a third CC down, like, economically speaking, he's going to be in a fine position. I just noticed something that made me very sad. He, he sacrificed two drones, both carrying minerals to make the evolution chamber. Truly, those ten minerals would have changed the course of the game. <laughs> Even if he won, it would have meant he lost. This is this is true. I, I don't... So so let me comment on some Zerg play here. I don't like that we haven't um, we haven't invested a single creep tumor at the front... energy A single energy into creep tumors at the front of the third. It's going to be very difficult for him to hold a push with no creep out in uh, front of his third or, or natural. Generally speaking, the Zergs like to uh, rely on creep in order to make the siege tank siege up further back. Now, here's a true question. How does creep actually make Zerg units go faster? Because wouldn't that make it more difficult logically? Like your legs are stuck on... No, no, no. Or whatever what you is, don't like... understand is that the there's actually Zerbs, you know, they they, they absorb proteins and, and, and uh, carbohydrates through the creep. 
which then allows their muscles to go a little bit faster. And it also yeah. it wicks away the ant the um the lactic acid from their from their um from their uh from their muscles. muscles. Yeah, exactly. That's no why problem. they can go faster on Crete. Apparently the uh Protoss never read their science books because um they didn't pass biology in like eighth grade because they believe they can survive through osmosis. Apparently, they absorb like the nutrients and everything they need from sunlight from the moon. Now, a slight issue with that is that osmosis doesn't actually penetrate the tissues. Like, so basically, the inside the inside husks beyond the skin should, in theory, be all necrosed and dead. But biology aside, we do need to talk about something going on in the game right now. There's a knight is going down that is uh that is going to go up in the back of the Terran base. Why the Terran is pushing out here? Who do you think this situation favors? Bias Terran with medivacs that's, that's supply locked. Yeah, no medivacs. Uh, and the, the siege tank is going to come back home, so hopefully it'll be a siege up. And I do believe that this third is going to go down without much fight, potentially the natural too. But how much damage will be done in the Terran main base? Kind of all of it, it looks like. He can lift up his buildings, lift and uh, the depot, and then land at the natural, and he's immediately got his base. Yeah, okay. Uh, and he did finish plus like one before he's... his before his uh, engineering bay went down. Yes, bolts. All of the that, that time killing his comrade um, doesn't actually look like uh, either player is going to get significant damage done. Most of this is just going to like the factory is lifting off and landing. The third base is landing from Terran. Oh Two, no! With with CC. Lift CC! Okay, actually. Lift, that, that lift CC! Lift! Oh! No! CC! Files coming down on their own units. We're knocked back down to a one base versus two base. Oh, I guess there's there's another base for Sensego. Yep. There's not particularly... Night one going to get cleared up. The issue is the Terran actually is in the lead with attack advantage. I wish plus one, combat, stem. Roach Ravager does not work well against Bio. Yeah, and he's he's kind of behind just because he doesn't have... He didn't turn this into a uh, orbital command yet, and he lost his orbital command in the main. So from that perspective, he's economically further behind than you would think. But I do believe that you're right, that the tech advantage is really going to like help him push forward and get a lot done here. Uh, his only actual real issue is that um, he's thrown down way too much production in the wrong places and is not electing to mine properly. Oversaturation of the third, banked up energy, that could be two, almost three meals, which will immediately put him ahead actually in front of the Zerg in terms of income. Oh yeah, if we look at income right now, the Zerg is actually far out mining, but this is partly to do with those mirrors and partly to do with just kind of the weird saturation here. We're long dis distance mining from the main, even though the natural only has two on it. But well, we do see a double drop coming across the map, followed by some workers and some runs. SCP escort, just in case of any accidents. It distracts the Zergling so they don't look up, you see? Uh, I thought it was and so they... he could repair in case there was any random, like, corruptors in the middle of the map, you know? Repair the dropships uh, as no, they ran Any by. random widow mines, you've got to be careful of those trader mines, you know? Yeah. Uh, we got the three marines, they do be following. They're checking there's nothing here, and they're going to do the long, long walk. Ooh, okay, uh, the Santee Booby has units to defend. We'll get an extractor, and we'll have to get out of here, because there are three men. He picks up, and then oh. boosts in. No, boost. this is a... And boost over... I think... Two spore crawlers. And mutalisks. If he... He could have stand and actually fought his ground, because the Zerglings didn't have the upgrades and Bainings and Ravagers were too far behind. Focus the three mutalisks down, and you... You're immediately ahead. But, um... I in will that say situation he should have just boosted and got out. I will say, despite the fact that uh, that happened, uh, we still are on three bases for three bases, and even though the economy slightly favors Zerg at the moment, this should change in the future. So as long as we can survive the large attack that's about to come across the map, we're probably in an okay position as uh, the Terran player. This tank spread and accidental Sim City is actually really, really good. If he sees up the fourth tank, then he's immediately got a concave going from. Uh, his upper bases, I can't think. Do we have the mu do we have the marine count to repel these meters though? We do. Okay. As long as he, as long as he, he as long as he makes medivacs with it. Yeah, we need medivacs in order because these guys are doing hard drugs, right? And these hard drugs are 
Uh, hot, hot trucks, best trucks. Uh, he should load these people. Um, Santi just streaming more lanes across the map, building up a huge bank. Uh, these meters gonna get pushed away. The turrets and the marines chilling in the natural. Um, real issue is he's banked up over th almost 400 energy across all of his orbital tools, and needs to cool down mules immediately so he can begin spamming marines out once again. Yeah, he needs to get the marines out. He needs to get the dropships out. But his tank spread is beautiful, and I do think that if uh, Saint Buki tries to push in here, he will lose quite a bit for that. I, I I'm actually confident that the tank can hold. He's got a bunker as well by accident. <laughs> Ooh. Again, his real issues. Ah, uh, he cooled down a few mules. He cooled down two. I'm proud of him. My hard nucleus is gonna get killed by some of the tarts. Yeah, uh, good trades. Good trades for the Terran. But now can he hold the front? Because it doesn't really... I think the part of the problem here is he doesn't just need to hold his natural. He needs to hold his third base as well, since his primary source of income is uh, these SCVs. Oh, the Banelings are gonna... The Banelings unintentionally blocking part of the uh, Baneling squad, but uh, too much of that, just welcome through. It's like an unfortunate position. GG is and called. Sandy is going to take game number two. That was very... I will say that uh, that was a close game. Um, I think that Sansego just needs a bit more of a killer instinct. If he would have pushed into the natural, why the, uh, why the Nidus was going on in his main, I think he could have gotten some critical damage done while it was only superficial damage for the Zerg player. Potentially. It's always difficult to tell with the games. Uh, Zerg, honestly, just at the end there, too much army supply. Not much you can really do against that, unfortunately. But uh, looks like GDAT bringing out the third player. Who is uh, our third player? I have no idea. Tell me. Let, let's, let's hope they can um, redeem our honor. If not, I'm. You I'm can't a... tell me who the third player is. Are you sure? I know uh, who the third player is. I Well, I don't. Oh, okay. Hold on. I'm looking. I, I know. I know, but I, I got to look through my memory palace. It is furious. Mm -hmm. Sure, memory palace. I'm definitely not scrolling up. Uh, this is definitely, I was walking through my memory palace. He's a, a diamond Zerg player. We get to see another ZBZ. Oh, uh, no. Yes. You know, it's your expertise, right? ZBZ? Uh, yeah, but I'm too good at it, okay? I don't want to talk about it. It's tiring, okay? So all you're going to do uh, is mean? Yeah, pretty much. It's like, you know, it's Cyril, Reyna, I kind of have to coach them all the time. It's kind of draining. Did you actually... People asking me... Did you Questions. coach? Did you coach Cyril and his like ZVP against uh, stats? Oh, absolutely. For Home Story I Cup. Not, I definitely actually watched Home Story Cup, and I'm not completely talking out of my ass right now. Oh, okay. So, so, so that's why Cyril lost for stats. It's because he was. Oh uh, yeah, being because I wasn't him. watching. Because you were watching. You were gonna be his ear, telling him what to do. No, you see, this is what happened when he was dominating in uh, BlizzCon in GSL vs. The World. We, we put a little earbud inside of his headphones, right? Mm -hmm. And then I, I'd be watching the uh, stream, and even though it was two two minutes behind, I told him what to do two minutes in advance. Worked perfectly. You just have that amount of game sense. Oh, I'm, I'm actually the smartest guy in, uh, alive, but... um. You can read the players. I hear you. I, I, I read the future. That's very good. I, maybe you should coach me. I mean, I already bully you in practice games, so... This is true. And then you bully me the other half of the time, but we'll strike that from the record. It's been strucken. Stricken. Stracken. Kraken. Kraken. Release the Kraken. Maybe Furious is our Kraken. Look at him. He kind of has a Kraken profile. That's The Viper kind of looks like a Kraken, don't, don't you think? I'm, I'm a kind of supporting Sansi at the moment. He's got his uh, he's got his zergling ready to go. You like the carbod zergling? I have two of them sitting on my desk right now. Oh my gosh! As a Terran player, you're keeping zerglings as pets. This is there's some. I think Peter would have issues with I, this. I keep zergs as pets. Was was the problem? I, I'm keeping them safe from the harsh world. Otherwise, I would have eradicated them. Those zerglings want to run free. They want to be out in the wild, with their claws tearing through native wildlife. Yeah, native protos. 
Yeah, for, exactly. Protoss aren't people. We can agree on that, right? I think we can. Burn the Protoss. I find it funny how um the matchups don't seem to correlate with um what happens in the lore. Actually, no, it sort of does. Because Zerg counters Protoss, Protoss counters Terran, and then Terran counters Zerg, it seems to be. Is that does that correlate with the I thought I thought Zerg countered everything until they got shoot shoot it on. Uh then, they not really. And then like I guess you're right, because they take ire, but the Terrans survive. Yeah. Yeah, no, the ter Terrans actually like no, the Terrans, they pushed a char, actually. They like sed they killed the Overmind. Well that was the protest technically they did it. They um they sedated the Overmind using drugs and everything, like they cleared the planet once before. And then again in Wings of Liberty. This is true. Okay, bottom right-hand corner. Plain, this time it is the right-hand corner, not the left-hand corner. We don't care about the left-hand corner. There's no trees over there, no scary trees. Bottom right-hand corner playing for Gear of the Apocalypse. It is furious. He will furiously look to take revenge. Sorry. Okay. Go, 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 go. Spawning in the top left-hand corner, the yellow Zerk on a two-win streak. It is playing for Unidos por el Vicio. Santa Bongi. He is uh, on fire, but will his on fireness be able to match the cheese coming out of Furious? He is going for a gas pool with no natural yet. It is not the earliest gas and pool he could ever have, but it is early enough to put on serious pressure. And given that Lightshade is the second smallest map uh, rush distance in the map pool, this could be quite effective. So this is why you don't have anything when I siege up to add your fourth with like 10 Hellbats and 16 Marines. It's just like, no. Um, on Lightshade? You don't get to prepare. No um, preparation time, illegal. I'm so confused. Yes? I'm gonna say yes. Yes. To stop this conversation. <laughs> Oh, because uh, I—I I mean, I, I really want to know what's going on with Furious's build here. I want to know if he's going to be going heavy Ling Bang pressure, or he was just really afraid of getting attacked. Because some Zergs are just afraid of like the twelve pool or like the thirteen pool on this map, and so he will, and so they will just kind of make this early pool as a defensive measure. And if that's the case, which it does sort of seem to be, um, it'll just mean that Furious is slightly ahead in tech and slightly behind the drones, as we're seeing now. Um, and so he'll need to be aggressive and make something happen with his tech and his uh, his link speed lead. Otherwise, he'll just end up being behind. Do drones benefit from creep speed? They don't. They are the, the ones that are... And if you notice, remember I said the, uh, the lactic acid gets sucked out of the Zerg's legs? Drones don't have any legs. But then how do they move? Bad game design, bad law design, burn them all. I think Visit. they're. I think they. You failed. Do you think they hover or do they. Do they hover or do they like what, kind what, of wiggle? What? I can't tell if they wiggle or hover. I think they kind of do like the um the wavy uh they do have, they have the dolphin. The like they, they, they do the like a dolphin tail. wave. Yeah. Drones are basically worms. Change my mind. They're called uh, work bugs, in Korean. So yeah, Indeed. you're right. Well. We got some banelings coming off. Yeah, this off, this is what needed to happen for Furious to make sure he's back in the game. And um, a couple, a couple Santa Boogie is completely on. unprepared for this. Five drones do go down. A couple banes blowing up on them. Uh, they're gonna numb this queen. Because, you know, queen's bait makes the best meal. Yeah, and 10 drones, 11 drones, drones, 12 drones, 13 drones. This is what we like to call might, critical damage. This might be game, my friend. Although not directly. There's there's not any links across the map yet, so uh, it won't actually be over. But uh, but like right now, there's a massive advantage economically speaking for Sensego. And what he's going to have to do is he's going to have to make sure that he can build his own Roach Warren and defend the Roach push that's going to follow follow this up. I mean, we see four supply difference that. Means. Yeah, the supply difference is because uh, roaches are really supply inefficient, and there's there's four roaches out already for uh, for Santa Boogie. Another another drone does go down. It's heroic minerals lost. Why don't the Zerglings just like help out? Can they just like not take a larger chunk of the mineral fields? 
Oh, yeah. Um, I think that whenever the Zerg drones, they have very, um, very precise claws. Because the problem with these minerals is you have to mine them precisely or you ruin the integrity. Zerglings would just hack at them and they would just completely, you wouldn't get any value back. Just get Kerrigan to train the Zerglings. Okay. Listen seeing, up, you little. Listen we're, up, Fluffs. We're seeing kind this of. This is your job. We're seeing kind of a repeat of the first game here, which is um, there's an attack coming across the map, and I'm not sure if Furious is going to have what it takes to repel it, but it is a little bit more delayed here, and there will be a spine crawler fishing, which will prop might be able to buy him time to get units out to defend the attack. The, the boys are being pulled. They're being pulled wow, back. Not really. They're being pulled to and fro, my friend. Yeah, and actually, um, there is only going to be three roaches and one ravager across map with a couple more. Let's see, how many? How many is this total? This uh, is there is seven. I can mark two, four, six, seven. Seven roaches, one ravager. Um, with with the uh, spine crawler here and his own roaches coming out and the second spine crawler dropping, I don't believe that Saint Dubuque is going to be able to push in. He may be able to cancel this plus one, but he's not risking it. He's just backing off. And um, kind of the worst part of this matchup has been uh, navigated for Furious, and now he's just going to have a plus one roach speed uh, timing against Santa Bugu, who just now started his lair. I mean, uh, Santi went straight for the drones that back even. Uh, Furious is behind by one, actually. Yeah, and I don't hate it. Um, I don't hate it here because in CVZ, if you're behind drones, you're actually able to, uh, if you have this in army supply, you're able to force your way across the uh, map with your units and then drone behind it. And because there's no plus one for Santi Buki, these lings will still be able to trade effectively with the uh, roaches there. And this will be a pretty hard attack for Santi Buki to hold. He'll probably hold it, but behind this, um, Furious should be able to then mass up his drones and, and, and kind of regain the advantage. That is, of course, assuming that he actually pushes them. I mean, he, he does nine drones as well. Yeah, he is, but he never—he didn't really commit to the attack. So I guess this is just going to end up being more or less even, but there will be a massive uh, upgrade advantage for for Furious as we move into the next portion of the game, as he does have plus one and roach speed already finished, which again, this is not yet started. The plus one just got started for Santi Boogie. Along with twenty-two links, you can't discount the links. The, the score is 20 to 0, and by 20 I mean 2. I don't know how to change this. Uh, 2 to uh, 0. Contr control, or, control 2 or shift 2. Control 2. Oh, okay, not that. Control 0, shift 2. There we go. That's I'm the match score. Alright, we're seeing the first third base being taken. Lings positioning to defend against other lings. we got roaches positioning to defend even more other roaches. There's a hydrogen coming, so this isn't really going to be an all-in. I imagine what will happen is some fight will happen, and then Santa Bibi would choose to back off. Because he doesn't have roach speed, if Furious decides to uh, push here, he'll take a lot of damage on the retreat if Furious decides to uh, decides to go for him. But as I say that, it looks like Furious is going to let him just kind of back off. And we will see a hydrogen advantage, tech advantage for Santa Bibi, and a plus two tech advantage for uh, Furious. Uh, plus the third base. And this third base and this plus two advantage is probably going to cancel out this hydrogen advantage. It's really hard to say, though. There is a hydrogen going down for Furious. Uh, there are... There are bios coming down, killing, almost killing overlords, but, you know, we're nice here. We like to... We like to only... Warning shots. Sure these, these are what I like to call warning shots. Oh, uh, right? yeah. Warning shots that leave you within a lynch of your life and begging for death. Yeah. yeah. We're very, very kind here. And actually, this, this guy, he's like, he is begging for death. He's like, we told you, get out. And he says, no, I'm just going to remain here uh, until you get... I, I, I'm just here to watch over my boys, and by my boys, I mean your boys. I'm definitely not... not one to register. This defender. this is a bit of an overextension from Sandy Booby. He got away with it last time, but now Furious might be looking to try to punish and push in. But Roach Speed is finished, so he will be able to back off as well as plus one. He won't be able to wrap it up with links. Um, and Overlord he is yeah. charged headlong into the danger. I don't care about your files. I'm going for it. And uh, he phases through two overlords. And now we see the push happening. Uh, it is going to kind of massively, this small roach advantage for Furious is going to turn into a massive roach advantage 
uh, especially with these Hydras being cut off from their meat shield. And uh, I do believe that this third base is going to go down and Furious is going to take game number three for Diaz the Apocalypse. Or they're going to take a break. Nope, they're going for Legend the Legend is so going to kill us with, like, the French pronunciation. Yeah. You know, if he didn't want us to mispronounce his name, he shouldn't have been French, you know? That's all I'm <laughs> Ooh, Lurker's oh, yeah. coming out. I missed both of them completely. If he gets any of these Lurkers out, he might be able to stave off the attack. But he just barely yeah, misses it. Santi gonna GG out once he realizes the hell, hell Mary lost a champion. Not enough. Well played. Bringing half of the team down. Respectable. Yeah, alright. So 1-2, bringing it back. Furious, the the French, the the great French hope. Indeed. Well, that was a great performance by Sandy Boongi. I'm not gonna lie though, he did rather well. I have to give it to him. I'm gonna be honest, kind of suspicious because apparently he's gold three according to his MMR. Oh wow! I'm like, mm. but maybe maybe he's but, just that good. But according to his border, he's masters three, so you know. I mean, maybe he's smurfing, you never know. It does look like this might be... Uh... I'll say that um, he was economically behind in the last game. And uh, the only reason was, I mean, he had a pretty brilliant play with that Nidus that completely took, uh, completely took our Terran player off guard. And so I believe that he's gold and he kind of had a moment of inspiration there. I mean, maybe, who knows? Either way, well played. And now, we wait for the next match. Let's see, who's on their... their brackets here? Let's see, let's see, let's they were so, see. They were so confident about in Sangi that, uh... They didn't think they needed their second play. He was like, you know what? Sangi's gonna... Or Santi. Santi's gonna all kill. I'm thinking Berserk. The Terran player? Or it could be coronavirus, which would be very scary if it was coronavirus. Oh, really? or it might be a uh, Protoss player. Those those are there. Coronavirus would be another Zerg player. Berserk is a Terran player, or it could be a Protoss player. It's like they've got three Protoss options to throw at us. Who needs who needs Zergs anyway? Zergs are cringe. Hey now. You're not you're not did I, did, did I stutter? You, you're gonna stutter whenever I freaking play you again. Sure, I'll just switch out from focusing on macro and then. Do you, how how confident are you feeling about fighting four fronts at once again, friend? Though. Uh, well, if if you have no macro, then I feel pretty confident that I can take your meta backdrop with like three marines. <laughs> uh, jokes on you. Now it's four. Ah, okay. Never mind. I'm not confident anymore. <laughs> But then you're going to get a lucky Bane connection, and then we're going to be back where it started, and it's going to, hmm. Those lucky Bane connections. Actually, I was playing, so I was playing the, uh, I'm, I'm playing the, playing through the campaign right now, and so I'm on the Terran missions, and I only have Marines with no stim and a Medivax, and slow Banes are really effing me up, man. You should play more Marine control. I'm trying, but, like, I'm also trying to, like, read stuff in Korean when it happens. It's very difficult. And then, like, not lose buildings. It's like, don't lose a single building. I'm like, what? Are you serious? What do you mean, don't lose a single building? That's, like, one of the mission objectives. Well, it's not an objective. It's, like, a secondary objective. But you know me. I gotta go for those secondary objectives. Uh, the best diva. Complete the zero-hour mission on normal difficulty without losing or salvaging a structure. Yeah, I'm doing it on, on brutal, so... <laughs> oh, okay. If it's on brutal... Then uh, that's fair enough. Um, I'm trying to complete them with brutal, but uh, it's difficult. I had you um... might you might have to drop down to at least hard to do um the best defense because like even I can't really do it comfortably. I also brutal. have to um I also have to kill their hatcheries too, so I have to both yeah. lose no buildings, kill their hatcheries. You you have to do one or the other. You're gonna have to do somehow micros. split against banelings when pff, I'm a zerg player. I can't micro. <laughs> Um, genuinely speaking, you, I don't think you can split at that point, because you're going to be facing, um, 
burrowed beans that just unburrow instantly. Detonate thing. So your your one your option is either you send in pre splits, otherwise you focus fire. Oh well yeah, I think I have to focus fire, but there was no bird banes yet anyway. There was bird hydras and lings. Oh, there's bird ultralisks, I think. Jesus Christ. Well that, not, well, there are, I only have there marines. Are I only have marines. There's no way if they present ultras yeah, on me, I just lose. You should hear me every single time I play the campaign. If I'm in a voice call with anyone that remotely plays StarCraft, they will just hear me yell into the mic Babelisks When right. I see ultralisks. Banalisks? Paper. Paperless. Paperlisks. Oh, because they don't have... Remember, see, but you forget when Ultras had eight armor, baby. Oh, no, I, I was whining on for, ba forums for balance. Oh, yeah? You, you remember that R2L? It's scarred in your memory? Uh, I mean, I thought the circle was broken then, and then uh, I just... I, I, I grew up a bit because I was, like, platinum at that point. I was like, oh, wait. And then I had, like, a... Probably 70% win rate in TVZ. Hey, we do have a, a Protoss player here. No. You said that Zerg counted Protoss, so this should uh, favor the uh, the French Warriors, right? I mean, it depends if it's a t full gate or um 12 pool. Whoever wins is... <laughs> whoever abuses the short map. Well, we're playing on I, submarine, that's true. It depends... I, well, I it, hope it, I see it, a 12 pool. There's gotta be a 12 right. pool. Here's how it's gonna go. If it's... If Furious wins, this game is canon. It happens in the law. If it's if it doesn't win, it's not canon. Doesn't happen in the law. Oh, so you're you're like Disney now, and you're canceling canon. Uh, I mean, it's more like Games Workshop, but sure. In the top left hand corner, playing for team Gendarme Guerriers de Apocalypse. There we go, Guerriers de Apocalypse. It is the pink Zerg Furious. And uh, spawning in the bottom right hand corner of the map, the blue, uh, the green Protoss playing for Unidos por el Vicio, it is Gazelle. Gazelle, you gotta lose. If you don't lose, it's not cannon. I mean, who cares about cannons? I like my Hellstorm rocket batteries, and if you don't understand that reference, go play Total War Warhammer 2. You heard it here first. If you don't understand references, play Total Warhammer. All right, Zesty, when you're downloading the game. Uh, you know, actually, <laughs> I have Warhammer 2. I think I have it downloaded, but I've never played. Oh. I'm not a very... We do see a 12 pool coming out, though, from uh, Furious. And we see a uh, just a regular uh, gateway coming out for Kazel. So we'll have to see how... Uh, we'll have to see how Kazel's uh, 12 pool defense uh, looks in this. Furious pulling the drone a little bit early for that hatchery. It is, we hit 300, then went the links. Against Protoss, you, it is okay to pull early a lot of times so that you can kind of hide it, and you can you can kind of stop him from pylon blocking you. I mean, he didn't really pylon block or hide the drone, but I digress. Here we see oh, the uh, Hormagons, I mean Zerglings, just trottling across the map, looking to nom on some delicious... Protoss souls. Yeah, and actually, this this wall is a little bit um, it's a little bit, it's a full wall off. No, it's not okay. Um, this wall is a bit. This this gateway is very exposed. There's a lot of surface area for it. Um, this probe's also kind of stuck. Oh wait, no, it is a full wall off. Yeah, the Zelda can't help. This this gateway is gonna go down. Hope no. or or it's not. Okay. Live. The probe is gonna go down though. The probe goes down, and this, what needs to happen here is these lings need to continue working on this, and two Zerglings need to get pulled away to stop the Zealot from going back into the wall. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm just sitting here, 10 stove for the computer, trying to see if these lings will manage to take the, the gateway or not. He, unfortunately, is not. He doesn't quite know the micro. Uh, note to self, make a, make a video and show, share it with the team that shows the correct micro this quote for. So the correct micro is have four lings attack the gateway, while two lings stand over here, so that if the zealot goes out of the wall, they trap the zealot and kill it. Um, and what, that's, what, that's the way that we played this. Uh, what I do enjoy is the pylon of pylons made behind the wall. Yeah, and actually, despite the fact that the gateway wasn't killed, this is still more than enough damage 
Uh, just in the fact that he made two Zealots and four Pylons and two Gateways and a uh, Cyber Core before the Nexus, this is going to be completely fine for the Zerg player. And as we notice, um, there's already e even up in workers. I, the fact that he's taking gas will put him slightly far behind, and he's also grabbing a spine crawler, which is a bit overkill, because he did save most of the zerglings, so those will be able to um, defend against any sort of pushouts across the map. But uh, he's already got his third base going down. He's already up in workers, and the uh, natural isn't even finished yet for uh, Kazel. He is choosing to go for Robo. And the robo will, this looks like, since there's no other tech structures going down for Kazel, uh, it will probably be some sort of like pretty pretty committed two base attack, is what I'm predicting out of this. Uh, well, all and... I'm going to comment on is the Proyos has a sick name, because every time I, I, you say his name, I think Hazel. <laughs> I don't Hazel. know why. Hazel. 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 It kind of sounds like, you know, like a, one of those like, like those TV shows that have angels. Kaziel sounds like the name of one of those like angels in a TV show. I mean, to be fair, most like Protoss names probably could get played off as like an angel or something. But then uh, it depends if you're going like the biblical angels, because then you have like Gabriel and Michael. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like those don't sound very mystical. But then you got like Selendis, Vorazun, Artanis. Those all sound like uh, angels, my friend. Also, this is a very chunky wall because you got a stalker. Adept. Yeah, Who's there's no way you're enough? busting this wall for sure. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. I in mean, there. if you had lurkers, you can hit it with enough wall. This is true. One lurker would destroy this. Um, unfortunately, lurker tech is quite a ways off. As the lair isn't even quite done yet, we I do think see a couple minutes pretty soon. We do see two uh, two uh, immortals out, and we'll have to see what the follow up. If it's another immortal, it is another immortal. Um, it's a supply block immortal. No. Um, I, I find it interesting that Furious has um preemptively made spores for uh, the Stargate that does not yet exist. Nor ever will. You know, I'm, but I'm kind of okay with it because he's not really paying attention to what's going on. He's just focused on getting all his macro up, and uh, he knows an attack's coming. He's making units. He's sneaking some drones. He's got some uh, spore crawls, and they're in position actually to deny like sort of uh, warp prism flybys. So he should be able to commit most of his forces to the defense when this attack does come, and not have to worry about warp prism flying at the back. Well, this Overseer gonna go for a scout, gonna see three more, there's another stall that will be in. Drop a casual change lane. Yeah. And then storm drop like nothing ever happened. He does see... It lives all... on one half. Yeah, he does actually see um, all of the tech and all of the extra gateways. He does see the lack of the third. He should know exactly what's going on, and yet he's choosing to drop a spire. I'm not sure I... We have, we have a couple statements that uh, need to be readdressed. Okay. Uh, we just see hear. four more gateway going down, which means he didn't see all the tech. He didn't see all the gates. Will he be prepared for the two base push? Um, we know not. We don't know. But, but I'll say that, like... He saw a lack of tech other than, you know, a bunch of, like, units and immortals. He saw, you know, a bunch of gateways more so, and he does still see there's no base. He should know that there were more gateways going down after that. So he should be able to infer from what he saw that this is going to be a two-base push. And even though we see this fire going down, we do see a bunch of units being made. So I do believe he, he knows what's up, and this fire is just his cheeky way of saying, come at me, bro. And when you're on, when you're coming to attack me, I'm gonna demolish your mineral line because that's this how Leng confident sees I am. You. He knows. He knows. Spire almost done. Uh, question is, how many meteorists are gonna be made? I don't think any meteorists are gonna be made, to be honest. I mean, maybe uh, a couple meters would go a long way because it's only you drop a couple of frags. Uh, if those stalkers eat a couple more vials, they're gonna go down. Um, but yeah. Zealot's getting down onto the roaches, going for the point. Uh, you wouldn't see this happening in the game, I that. Yeah, this... This this push is gonna go... These Immortals are really the backbone of this push here. And they're just chewing through these, uh... 
these roaches. There are no roaches left, only a few ravagers which are about to die. And, I mean, uh, the ravagers got a couple. My life, but I uh, sort of uh, virus. They did, yeah. A couple of zealots, but um, just too many, too many units, I think. Well, and with all these lings out now too, uh, they're gonna do good against the current army. But as soon as this, uh, these extra zealots join in, these lings are not gonna do very well either. All right, uh, sort of going for a tr actually gaining the opponent's around the can on the uh, zealots. Um, gonna kill a couple of them. Uh, you just now begin to pop. Uh, oh. The surprise mutas here are actually going to do quite well considering uh, he just worked in a round of adepts. Yeah. But now he knows and he will be making stalkers. And so the question is will the mutas be able to overpower the stalkers? Uh, Probably not. What he needs to do is uh, put the extra core workers from his main, he needs to have full, and then dive on top of the army, either with the Ravagers or with the Lynx and the Nucleus. Uh, now he's sort of in trouble. Is this a thing force? I do believe that his mutas are going to be able to power the stalkers, but the question really uh, is, will it be enough? Because he's lost two of his bases. He has no economy left really to speak of, and he doesn't think it'll be enough. He GG's out. Uh, I do definitely believe the game could have still, still been won, but uh, fair enough. The, there was a pretty Put big tech fight. advantage here, and like it wasn't immediately clear how... Kaziel was gonna like answer the Midas, and he was probably gonna lose everything across the map uh, unless he, he, he got moved, a recall. He morphed in like four Archons at home, but uh, they were only just beginning. And even so, then Kaziel is on two base with the excess money from the float. Uh, Furious could morph, uh, could morph two hatcheries straight away, reclaiming his lost bases, and he was only ten drones down. For um, all he needs to do is get a couple good trades in the uh, with the Needlisks, and he would still possibly be in the game yeah it was certainly uh certainly it was a possible uh game but furious didn't feel confident playing it out uh and i can't completely blame him it was looking to be very bleak it I was mean, the, it was the reverse of the uh, ir situation that happened in the uh in brood war indeed fair enough. now we know this wasn't canon not canon not a canon game didn't happen Furious never lost a game. Not not according to canon, anyway. Wow, my client is buggy. Not really hard. I can't make my chat window go down. What nice. the heck? What the heck? It sounds like fun. Either way, it would be nice to see these games stick out a little bit longer. Um... Certainly, you can have awesome comebacks, and this is the finals after all of VTL. That's true, and we have one player left because uh, now we're three to three to one, uh, and against us, or one to three, I guess. And I am not sure who that player is going to be. Neither. It's a shame Zykes are promoted literally just before this happened. Yeah, literally uh, before this happened, it would have been X Y X or, and I think he. Because then I can always just steal his login and then. Uh, did someone say it will kill? Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, my gosh. Don't. We, we no, have, we have, no, one. no, that's not what we do. That's not. What I, we I, do. I did almost yell at Legend for like suggesting that Zoxa leave his league to um, try playing this, but no. Mm. Well, it does seem, it is a bit annoying, you know, uh, whenever you just barely go over and then it's like, is your skill level really at Masters 3 if you go promoted Masters 3, but then you kind of like, you know, go back down at MMR? Eh, not I, really. I, I'm still considering whether or not to make a doink roll and then just assign it to him. <laughs> just like dedicated. This is a potato. Bully him for a couple of days and then we'll say, hey, he promoted, congratulations. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, what is the, the minimum uh, MMR tier for Masters 3? Uh, it's like 4,200 and I assume like 92 or something like that. Can't exactly see. I'm just using Zykes as his uh, base because he looks like 50 underneath and he's 42. Is it is it Zykeser? I, I always call him Xpire. I call him Zykeser. Um, Do you know which one is correct? I mean, he doesn't exactly disprove me. Well, he hasn't disproved we... me either. I mean, I suppose it's just a name. Like, it, you pronounce it how you think you can. 
uh, because again, accents between like American and like English just varies everywhere. It's like I don't really care if someone calls me uh, my body or my body. I only start yelling at you if you call me my booty or something like that. And just like my booty. Why? It kind of yeah, sounds no. um um like northern Egyptian sort of like or Egyptian booty or like. You know, my body Northern is, African. Uh, my dad's nickname. I just joined this account when I was six, so I've been playing since. Gotcha. You know, there's free name changes. You can change your. Yeah, but I kind of just leave it out of respect, and it's like, what else would I change it to? Juniper. Nico. Ah, uh, that's what my account is. My or, second account's name. Or you could do Oaken. No. Osen. No. Yeah. Osen Abinuch. That's what I think it should be. Mm, no, illegal. <laughs> it needs to be something cool like Executioner. Because then they start fearing me when they see me in a tournament. They're like, oh shit, it's Executioner. Hey, I just realized I have Maru on my friends list. And he's Diamond on NA. So that should tell you everything you need to know about the strength of NA. All the strength of ping, just drop pack your opponent. Easy wins. Oh, there was someone in Grandmaster who was clearly drop packing. Yeah, oh yeah, you were the one who sent it to I, me. I, yeah, I sent it to you. It was Hazel. Unfortunately, I don't think they're ever gonna get banned because Probably Blizzard not. does not care anymore. Um, I could always check see if they're still like on my friends list or something. Yeah. And then this ice, because also there's this ice guy. Who's blatantly hacking here? Bla yeah, yeah, ice is blatantly and there hacking. Was, uh, someone who finished, uh, like um, last, not last, first in a uh, grandmaster, uh, season or two ago. That was, uh, win trading, like blatant win trading, and like everyone was reporting him, like get him out of grandmaster because he was six k and uh, six point six k. Like nearly a hundred percent win rate, not losing anything, and the game's ending instantly and so forth and everything. It's a good thing when Beyond went on NA and had a like a seventy six game win streak. It's a good thing he was streaming at the time. He did that all in one net one episode. Yeah, but even yeah. like once you hit like the six k mark, then even they will begin to struggle. No, like uh, uh, like like Beyond had a uh, he he strike he, he went on NA, turned on his stream, and he went seventy six and zero. This is the thing that happened. This was back when he won yeah, Worlds. Yeah, I yeah, know, but he would still struggle towards the end. He did struggle, yes, but still, like, he, he, he won. Still, not respect, <laughs> but he did struggle. I've always wondered yeah. how, how good how good some really good players could be if they had uh, hacks. Like, like if you gave Sarah hacks, like, can you imagine how his win rate would be? That would be so crazy. I don't think it would be that much higher. Look at... No, I think it would. I don't think it... Because he could always make the correct decision. You know? True, but then mechanical error. Like, he, he's already nearly making the perfect decision most of the time. Oh, uh, absolutely false. Have you... I mean, half the time whenever I mean, I don't, players uh, beat I don't him... Watch, I don't watch the games, so... I, last last games I've watched is, like, 2018 GSL, Mario vs. Serral. He has to, um... He has to make a lot of... Uh, he has to make a lot of, like, really like safe plays like early on it's it's as it's the earlier setup that he has to make either gambles or like play safer and that's where he could like really benefit and set himself up better but this is not about Saro. this is not about ice the hacker this is about in the top right hand corner playing for this is really uh, I, this looks it. like a, this looks like a different clan i'm going to be honest upxv but unidos por el vicio Maybe it's their ex team. Gaziel, Red Protoss, my friends. The Angel. Pay attention. And in the bottom left hand corner, playing for Team Yeah, the Apocalypse. It is Zod. Didn't he get his neck broken? I have no idea. How's he playing StarCraft with a neck with a broken neck? Because you don't need to move your neck. You can have it just like in the cart and you say, Nurse, bring me my keyboard, there's a clan war that I need to save. And the nurse has to like hold the keyboard up to his hand because he can't move it and like. No, no they have they have like it. the food trays and everything. 
No, you see, actually, the nurses are playing for him, which is explains why this is going to be an absolute domination. Because you know, you can't, you have to let the women win their games, right? This is because true. otherwise they're going to stop playing with you. Yeah, it's exactly. what baby, it's what like baby um puppies do. They yeah. Be, uh, wait, wait, what? Them. Like act puppies or like some sort of animal do it. Like when they're play fighting, they will uh, the guys will let the uh, girls win just so they keep playing with them, right? Well, is it, this, I, is a, this is a very thing. charged. I don't know if I'm prepared to have this conversation. I, I, let's look at the builds here. Uh, there's a double gateway going minutes. down for Casio with the with the with the cyber core, and there's only one gateway going down for Zob with the cyber core. So I'm guessing we're gonna see. Uh, either tech coming out very soon, or actually a base coming out for uh, Zod right now. Wait, is this another? No, this is a, this is a tech play. Okay, so it will be a Stargate coming out. Um, our resident PvP expert Nico, what does this Stargate mean? Uh, Stargate means you're gonna see Void Rays, and they're gonna go. Brrr. Okay. You have a high, I, I am predicting a high forecast of chi. Yeah. And salty, salty players, both in Twitch chat, in game, and in the casting lineup. Well, Zod seems to know exactly, or Zod knows exactly what's going on in the main base, but what he doesn't see is this proxy ro robo going down. Um, well, I, I do have to say, I think um, there's a clear line being drawn against Void Race against the Mortals. I think Void Race win. Well, but unfortunately, we don't actually see Void Rays coming out. We see a, we see a Oracle coming out. All right, my life is a lie. I'm handing in my meteorology degree, and uh, I will leave you be. I will be right back. All right. Um. So what we do see here is we see a, a very all-in build coming out from Kazio, who's going to be building uh kind of three, three gateways versus of stalkers and immortals. Uh, on the other end, we have a shield battery, a nexus, and. Uh, and a Stargate coming out for Zod. Hopefully, if he starts building, uh, if he starts building uh, Void Rays as soon as possible, he might be able to hold this push and do a lot of counter damage with this uh, with this Oracle on the other side of the map. Um, but this attack is coming, and as we see, the army values are far far in favor of the uh, of the Angel player Kaziel. We do see a, a single only a single uh, mortal, so it's not going to be doing that much damage. But this warp prism will allow him to kind of push between like the front and the back of the base. And I'm not sure if Zod will have the forces out to defend it. Perhaps if he gets this uh, Void Ray out, he'll be able to target down the uh, warp prism before he can get too much damage. But now the attack is coming and we'll see what happens. And the uh, warp prism goes down immediately, or the, uh, the the, warp, the battery goes on immediately. The warp prison is here, but it is going to get taken out by a bunch of stalkers. Uh, he tries to defend the bottom of the ramp, and he loses a lot. Will he be able to force through the ramp? He will be able to force through the ramp, and he does force the uh, he does force the, uh, the the warp prison away. But he does bring back the uh, he does bring back his uh, oracle instead of using it to get any kills on the other side of the map. Well, I guess it did get ten kills. So this is very all in from Casio now. He does have to actually get something done. And Zod unfortunately, coming back the warp boys rank targeting down the warp prison for yep. And then now that reinforcements are no longer an option, uh, as long as he doesn't attack his own gateway with his charge up void rate, which unfortunately he did, he should be able to hold this now. I mean, it is going to be a fair victory, even if it is a victory nonetheless. Uh, that one boat worker probably should be focused down by the void rate, but. Uh, a whole army being cleaned up, a couple of workers going down. Yeah, uh, and with the damage he got- still continued. With the damage he got done across the map with his Oracle, um, he's going to be in a commanding position now that he held that. Uh, especially if he can get all of his forces, all of his gateways and his production facilities repowered. Indeed, we're going to see two voids uh, out to match the three stalkers in uh, War Prison. Uh, Kaziel going to look to go for the throw and try in this game before anything gets worse. But not sure it's going to work out for him. Might be better off trying to macro. Uh, no, I think, I mean, he's now or never, and he decides never uh, when he sees the two void rays and the uh, force field goes down. And, anyway, uh, GG, Zod takes it, bringing the series 3-3, I believe. The birds and the bees talk has been requested.
Um, and now that the action's over, I think we can have this. So what uh, let happens... me actually find the study for you. Yes. Yeah, I would love the study. Uh, but as we all know, when a bird loves a bee very much, uh, it allows the bee to sting it. And that poison is pushed into the, the bird's blood system. The bird turns into like a ravenous hunter. And uh, and then that's how zombies are born. Well, it's not a study, but basically the same thing, right? Just it's like you can look it up. An article on the internet. Good enough. Pretty much. Either way, you all thought me crazy, and I am. But it's not related, okay? I speak nothing but the truth, and we're going to wait on the fourth player, bringing it towards the ace match. Dun -na -na -na. I, I've seen this before, this this idea about uh, self-play allowing, but it's not necessarily always related to gender. Uh, I've seen it just in general, like, uh, the weaker ones tend to let the stronger ones, and whoever that may be. Sometimes it's even within, you know, male and male play. Ones let the strong one, no, this one's saying the stronger ones let the weaker ones win. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Every Well... Let them win like something like twenty to thirty percent of the time. I don't know. Either way, that's why I let you win when we play. You know. Ah, oh, yeah, but I win a lot more than thirty percent of the time. Well, you know, your ego is worse than than a puppy's. I mean, sure, you're not wrong there. I've been trying to keep it in check, but you know, it's just not working out. <laughs> That was a rough one. I actually thought uh, I thought Kizio was going to close that out, but Zod held it off. It was very good. Uh, we're getting a request for a moment. Uh, we'll see how long things go. Is it a moment uh, or is it a momento? Define moment. Uh, I did this in physics the other day, and I completely forgot a moment is like a force or something to do with levers. Hmm. Is this a is a moment a physics question? I moment is a uh, mom moments are actual things in physics. Uh, it's relating to do with like the forces experienced by um objects under like tension or something. I think. And then you got like stress and strain. Strain and stress. I didn't know that. I didn't know moment was a physics term. I'm learning so much on this cast. Yeah, well, uh, young modulus that I didn't make any notes for because I was too lazy. I also learned any time I lose her Protoss, it's not canon, so it didn't happen. I'm just being bullied by a Black Lily. Look, I said... <sighs> what, did, give up. what did you say? What did you say? Huh? What, what did they already... What did, you, what, what, what did chat already know? I don't even know. No, it's, it's not... Well, just chat already knew that I'm hopeless, apparently. Um... I didn't know that. I, I should ban every single one of you from the Discord. You gotta, you gotta be careful with that ban hammer, you know. Those who ban, you know, but fly too close to the sun, Icarus, that sort of thing. A little, little translation. Qualquiera. Which one do you want? Yeah, no. I, I have actually banned uh, technically one guy. Even though I wasn't even mod yet. I was that good. Interesting. How did you manage to ban someone without being a mod? Um, this guy was a uh, scammer. He he got boosted to 6k, and he actually was supposed to be, like, one of the guys leading the team in, like, charge of uh, Starcraft training and everything. Oh, wow. Uh, because he was basically the, what happened He was the guy, he, the number he, one rank on the ladder? He tried to... He tried... No, 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 this isn't the ladder. This was way before that. Hmm. This was, like, tw uh, oct not even October, like, August last year. So, long, long ago. Basically, they was, was running a tournament uh, for, like, Masters and Diamonds and below, where they get higher players to coach them. I won it, 
and was getting coaching from this guy who was going by the name of Hackstyle. He was a diamond one Zerg masquerading as a 6.3k. So he got found out and they found a bunch of evidence on him. But then because, like, he managed to trick me because uh, he actually gave me, like, good advice. And I was like, you know what, I don't know what this looks like. Because I've never had, like, good coaching before that point. But then um, he came back under another name and he invited me. He actually invited me to GDAT. And then I, I after um a couple of sessions, like I noticed this is the same guy. Uh -huh. And then uh, I told Legend and Legend kicked him because uh, I'm I got banned from GTAT. <laughs> I got kicked from the Discord, kicked in game. I was just like, hmm. Very interesting. Interesting. Nonetheless, story time's over. Yes. Pla in the playing top right hand Unidos for El Vicio in the top left hand corner top of the map. Hand. It is the yellow Protoss. Dyer Jose. That was very Spanish of you. I'm Latino, man. I'm ethnically Colombian. And in the top right-hand corner, we have purple trees that are also scary. These aren't even trees. Sorry. They look like, they look like amethyst. In the left, the bottom right-hand corner, though, we have the hero of Guerre the Apocalypse, Zod. The Last Life. This is match point. For uh, this is I, match point match for the point. I think this for is... the for the opponents for the opponents this is match point. Yeah. Who have it's the score now is three to two, but if Zod can win the next two games, Guild the Apocalypse will be going on to be the champions. Uh, and... Yet another TVP. I mean, yet the TVP. I mean PVP. We're gonna see potentially a gas block uh, coming down off the side. That is a gas block be... coming down from Zod. He doesn't want to deal with any of that nonsense he dealt with last game. I respect like the move. Either way, uh, we're gonna see one pro hero of the hour trying to poke away at this thing. No, I want my gas. Please, please let me. No. I, I think the correct answer here is to pull like what is it like four or five workers to, to stop this from going up? Is that right? Maybe it's three. As Terran, as Terran, mm. when someone gas blocks me, I just laugh and don't take the gas anyway. <laughs> Mm. Well, that, that's I, I take a 233rd CC against Protoss, so it's like my normal macro build does this anyway. You think you can you can cheese me? Nah, 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 nah. I think and then I just walk over there. Jose is more or less kind of doing the same sort of thing. I think he's just going to take a, a Nexus and he's just going to play a macro game, which I think Zod might be confident in. Uh, he did try go for the um, Nexus lock. He built a pylon and cancelled it. Uh, not exactly sure what he's doing now because uh, Zod is not interested in macro at all. Well, this could well, be a. This is just an aggressive opening. This, this could well, transition to macro from Zod. Yeah, well, he didn't take the Nexus, is what I mean. I'm, I'm bad with words, okay? Good point. I'm bad. I'm bad with words. Je ne suis English. Anyway. Actually, no, that actually is true. Je suis tres croissant. There we go. Oh, uh, you are a croissant. We see two adepts finishing out. Uh, not going to. Uh, I, I wish these adepts would have cleaned up this. Uh, cleaned up this. This. Uh, what? What the hell it's called? Little pro before they went across map. Just because it's giving more information to Jose. Even if you don't plan on taking your natural, you don't want Jose knowing that. I mean, he didn't see the adepts as the thing. So these adepts are gonna blindside Jose. Oh, that's true. And they walk right by the stalker. And they get in. Oh, oh not quite. They will Very close. Get in. Very close. I would personally target the stalk with the two adepts because they can two can win one on one. Uh, oh, cancel the shade. Bit this... of a mistake there. Um, yeah. Oh, he oh, does get not, in. He planned to get in anyway. We will get the one probe before dying, unfortunately. Yeah, and this, uh, the these early... trades didn't quite go in the way that he wanted to. I don't think. Apparently not. Uh, Zod gonna now take his uh, Nexus, making the void ray, same opener as before, whilst we see uh, two Scorchers and a Zealot. Yeah, this is just gonna be slightly economically favored for Jose, and it does look like he's going for a uh, an Observer and then a uh, and then a Twilight Council. So he is just gonna be playing a macro build, and so he shouldn't actually be worried about trying to push in here. So it's going to be up to Zod to kind of prove that his opening just, just put him massively behind. Well, we see the Stalkers trying to 
focus down this uh, shield latch, but it's not going to be successful. A little odd in the positioning, as in it, it's by the ramp. But uh, Void Ray going to push away these two stalkers. Not not happy with taking a fight, and uh, Phoenix going to go for the scout. He's going to see the very very early third timing in um, PVP. Yeah, he will see the third, and unfortunately, he just dropped another battery. So um, hopefully, he registers that this third is a. Uh that Jose is in a very economic position. He doesn't need to be defensive. He needs to be looking to either match economically or make some make some work happen. We do see a Twilight Council going down for Zod, so he will be catching back up in the uh, in the the tech. But there will be a blink timing for Jose at some point in the very near future. Uh, the thing is, two Void Rays. If they move across the map now, which is seemingly what's happening, then. Uh... They're not going to have a great time. There's no shield batteries to, here at the natural, and there's going to be two, maybe eight stalkers to defend against uh, two charge up void rays. These yeah. entries might be able to section off some of the stalkers, and then it could be. Yeah, and Jose's could, observer saw them move out, but it just didn't quite register to him, and he's not starting shield batteries or anything, so this could be a very effective attack for Zod. Indeed. Uh, Oracle joining in the fray. Uh, Pylon going down. Uh, oh. Two blue stated void rays. This is great. This is going to soak up a lot of damage. Indeed. Uh, shield battery not finished yet. Oh, um, they're just trying to get away. They, trying to get away. They know they can't fight four void rays. Spaces they... ward going down. Uh, going to trigger. Oh, no. Isolate half the ball because trapping the other for the moment. This third's okay. going down, and there's really not much that Jose can do about it. Uh, so I, mean, I think he realizes he's, he's up to his nation. He yeah, uh, but it's, it's a bit late. The damage is done. Damage is done. Third taken, floating 1,200 resources behind this. A little bit of a macro error. Not exactly able to warp in um, any defensive units, considering the supply block. Yeah. I'm gonna send a probe to take the other third location. That cheeky and little attack for Zod really uh, put him back in the game, didn't it? Uh, perhaps. Perhaps it did. Perhaps it did. Perhaps it did. Game it now there is a double expansion going behind for Jose, so um, Zod will have to realize this and kind of make another attack in the future. Um, but I, I think it probably before these expansions hit in, I think he would be, you know, have quite a sizable force. So I think there's a great chance that Zod will. Uh, Zod will end up uh, being able to find this timing. I don't like I that mean, he keeps and, on warping um, it on this slow pylon. Jose is going forward with his nine stalkers, uh, only to encounter four void race. Two stalkers being completed with Zod. The blink does uh, stop that from being a total massacre, though. True. Nonetheless, uh, definitely puts a dent in his uh, offensive capability. Gonna send in three stalkers for the counter. Well, uh, with the uh, flank rather on the on the throw. I don't know why I said three on the on his throw. Speaking English. Mm. Even with the blink, we did lose one stalker there. Nothing for the opponents. So that wasn't a an amazing trade for uh, Jose, but he did deny the scouting Phoenix, hallucinated Phoenix. And so the one thing he has going for him is Zod has no idea that there's a double expansion going down. So he may not realize that it's that he should move out sooner rather than later. True. I do believe slightly confident considering the recent predicament. Uh, charge now finished for these zealots. Yeah. Doesn't think that his opponent will immediately go for double expansion and considering the counter pressure. Uh, it's reasonable to assume that there is some sort of two base play coming behind this. Yeah, but at some point maybe he'll, he'll see that the, the numbers of stalkers just aren't growing the way that he thought he will. And, uh, whereas his army is quite large. Uh, he does try to move out, but kind of gets... He's kind of getting um, psyched out into sitting back. I don't think this is the worst thing in the world. Because, again, um, he has a pretty sizable 20 supply advantage, and, and that supply is almost exclusively an army. Uh, so Jose is going to have to really figure out how he's going to be able to convert his, his economic advantage into an army advantage um, to make this game continue. I mean, the issue really is um, Jose doesn't really have anything to push away the void race. 
Eight stalkers are not an effective unit for um for not, not an effective unit, not an effective counselor for um. Oh, he's gonna lose uh, all these stalkers just... because uh because they got trapped in the stasis war. And I, this might I mean, be the trigger of it. Be able to blink away, but well, well, Zod, if Zod, okay, Zod doesn't want to. Zod wants them to get away. Zod, don't let them get away, please, Zod. No. Zod, let them get away. Um, if Zod would have positioned just a little bit more aggressively, they would have nowhere to blink to. That indeed, that would have been a free five stalkers. That would have actually cut the army of his opponent down in. About a third. And it might have been the trigger with the multi prong stopping. It might have been the trigger that Zod needed to push out. But it looks like Zod's going to be content just taking a fourth base slightly slower, but sitting on much higher, uh, like a, probably a much better tech with uh, all of his air superiority. Grabbing the Dark Shrine that, um, from Harass. And... Because of the uh, pressure that uh, Jose has been trying to place, he's floating 2,000 minerals and still hasn't saturated his fourth base. Uh, sort of this entire time has been ahead in workers. Yeah, and if we look at structures, he's just now adding on extra gateways. He's only got seven now, seven or eight, or I guess ten now. Um, and this is what he needed to spend his money earlier. So hopefully now he'll be able to get his uh, get his mineral count down. But it might be a bit too late. Starcraft's a very unforgiving game. If you float for too long, it just it's hard to catch back up. Indeed, and the. Uh... He's got 17 stalkers positioned for their counter, for an attack, or at least to prevent a move out. Yeah, but they these... are gonna, they're gonna see these uh, results moving across the map. But they're oh. not necessarily gonna register. Yeah, for either uh, player, home, actually. At home, uh, just several archons being morphed. You're gonna hope that the archons are enough. Stalkers, you're gonna try and gauge these zealots. Uh, with the slow warp ends. Okay, he does get the uh, tag on the stalker, so he'll be able to see where they are. And now that they get recalled, I imagine we'll see the push out across map, which was pulled all the way back home because of this little stalker counter, which granted Jose maybe the time that he needed to get a defense up. We'll have to see. Uh, we're going to see DTs on the field now. Uh, only two observers out for Jose, both by the Archons. If he doesn't bring them... To the fight in time, Dark Templars might just actually clean up all of the ground units. Well, he actually does go ahead and grab um, all of his Archons and his Observers. So the DPs uh, the are not safe come today. again, causing huge flash on the uh, Zealots and Void Race. Void Race taking an arm up in the fight. Uh, Zod's entire army gets cleaned up, and it looks like this puzzle may just have critical mass now. And yeah. Move the map. Yeah, unfortunately, um, the kind of move back for uh, Zod to deal with the Zealots or the Stalkers that got recalled was the time that Jose needed to get his defenses up and now he looks to be having a critical mass pushing in. There was also just an unoptimal army engagement and composition. Uh, could have won considering just larger mass, but at this point I think it's just definitely clinging to hope. Um, these probes are going to try to get away and slowly be massacred by Stalkers. Which, uh, Quite ridiculous amount of overkill on the last few there, and uh, should expect to see GG. Yeah, we're seeing more than doubling the supply and knocking on the door with uh, carriers out, but the, I don't think the carry. I don't think the carriers are going to be stand up to this amount of stalkers. Indeed, uh, zealots, zealots swooping in. underneath, trying to keep these uh, carriers from dying. But, um, Getting probably about the best trades he could hope for, uh, but at this point, this is not quite enough. I mean, maybe. Maybe it is. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking maybe. about. It's <laughs> maybe easy. it is. We've ne we're not Protoss. Carriers OP. There are the DTs in there now, and actually, I don't see the uh, the observers. The observers, the observers right. were the taken observers out. The observers are uh, at the natural and. Not the third, but uh, well, at least one of the carriers has gone down, running out of intercept with the Archon Flash doing that job. A couple BT preventing the army from jumping on the carriers, but uh, link forward. Yeah, actually, really seven. messing up the micro here for uh, Jose, just these, these BTs. And uh, Zod will stay in the game with uh, two Nexus left to his name. We'll have to see if a DT carrier is something that can carry him through or not. 
Uh, I mean, we still see have well. Uh, Jose is on 190 supply to uh, Zod 60. Yeah. This army is a very niche one. Gonna take out the um, observer. Yeah, the observer being dead means that all this force will go down. Uh, but he does kill all of the car uh, carriers, so he won't be able to pull this cheeky move again. And he and... just left to clear the remainder of the stalkers, but on yeah. five bases now, Jose, I think, is just going to be able to win out the game. Yeah, with good upgrades, too. He's got 2-2 um, two, two on the ground um, to Zod's only plus 2 attack. Uh. I... Yeah, and with the uh, with the lack of the lack of bases now for Zod, does that that push? Even though it did uh, end up getting cleaned up, the lack of bases is going to make it very difficult for Zod to approach anywhere close to Jose's supply. Again, he's going to need a lot of really good harassment and uh, mind games to get back into this, which Jose gave him earlier on, so it's possible. Unfortunately for his uh, harassment, not going to be effective. Seeing four cannons going down at. His exterior base is not going to be able to really effectively jump on any of the units. Um, um, I'll say I think suspecting some sort of hidden base that Zod doesn't have to try to keep him in the game. Perhaps not quite understanding about what's going on. Uh, we're going to see Archons engaging with other Archons. Yeah, and unfortunately I think there's about an equal amount of Archons and just a bunch of Stalkers to be for uh, Jose's Let side. Elop Train's coming in. Uh, Gigi's called and Jose will finish. And with that, Unidos por el Vicio will win the tournament. And, Unidos uh, por el Vicio. It was a close one. I, I gotta say, um, I think our team was really strong, and there was just a couple of uh, moves in a lot of those games that was just, uh, you know, very very simple uh, errors. Perhaps it was nerves, because there's lots of uh, areas, I think, that we could have uh, really done very well and just kind of missed our timing a little bit. I mean, really, it's just um, the volatility of the lower level matchups. Yeah. Even if you've got evenly skilled opponents, what tends to happen is just one person makes a mistake or another, or it's just like an oversight or a missed piece of information that um, can just completely catapult games in unexpected directions. Yeah. A very Thank good, you. very good effort from uh, all of our team, I'll say. Uh, and I'm Thank very you. proud to be associated for uh, playing and everyone for watching. Hopefully, we made a decent casting duo. Considering Zesty's analytic and me, I'm just, I'm just here, just chilling, you know. Uh, well, it was a pleasure casting with you, Nico. Indeed, my good sir. Indeed, and uh, it looks like my I estimated especially... time for uh, the clan war was correct. Two hours. There you go. I especially like the part where Chad uh, yelled at you. <laughs> of course you would. Yeah. All right. Well, GG, guys. Thanks for watching. Do you have any shout-outs, Nico? Uh, shout-out to everyone who played. Uh, yeah, definitely shout-out to them. And shout-out to me. Screw you. Okay. Well, fair enough. Shout-out to Nico. Shout-out to everyone who played. My name's Zesty. Thanks for watching.